Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to see another set of Azure Data Factory interview question and today's video will be part 7 in our series. So let's move ahead and see the Azure Data Factory interview questions. But before moving on, I do recommend all of you to connect with me on LinkedIn and I will leave the link in the description box as well. Now, when you talk about ADF, now one of the very important questions that is asked is how you can open and read the contents of a file in Azure Data Factory. So let's say you have a file and you just want to open and read the contents of a file in ADF. Now at this point, you all can pause this video and think about the answer and if possible, write it in the comment section as well. Now I'll proceed to the answer part. Now in this case, always remember that whenever they are asking you to read a file, right? And display the contents, two activities should come to your mind. The first is the web activity, right? What you can do is you can use the web activity in Azure Data Factory provide the URL for the file that you want to read from the storage account in the web activity and the output of the web activity you can pass to the set variable. Now when I say set variable, so when, the, when you connect the web activity and then you provide the URL of the storage account where you want to read the data from, in that case the output of the web activity will have a response. Right now that response contains the text of that particular file. Now that text you can actually pass to the set variable activity and get the contents of the file in the output response. Right. So this is the exact way in which you can do that. If you want, you can also practice this, connect to the web activity, get the response output dot response from the web activity and then pass it to the set variable and that variable you can simply read the output response from the web activity and you will be able to see the contents of the file. Now moving on to the next question is like if you want to delete the files in the blob storage how you can actually do that right so now this is also very common and an easy question as well. So when you talk about deleting the files from the blob storage or your ADLS Gen 2 or whatever the storage is in that case, what you can do is you can simply use the delete activity in the pipeline and you can provide the configurations for the file that you want to delete. So if you want to delete multiple files, you can provide that configuration as well. If you want to delete a specific file, you can provide that configuration as well in the delete activity. That is how you can actually delete the a list of the file or a single file. Now, if you want to apply any trigger on that particular pipeline, you can also do that. If you want that, okay, moment that file arrives, I want to delete it, you can provide an event-based trigger. So this is how you can explain it to the interviewer that, okay, this is how I can do that. You can also let him know that, okay, if you want to delete it on a specific event, you can also do it using the triggers as well in the pipeline. So now moving on to the third question, that is uh, how you can execute the pipeline without stopping the execution in case of any activity failures. Now it means that let's say you have a pipeline, pipeline has multiple activities, activity one, two, three. Now even if activity two fails, you don't want to fail the pipeline. How you can actually do that? If you know the answer, pause this video, put it in the comment section right now. So let's move ahead and see the answer for it. Now, if you look at the answer, what exactly does it mean? So instead of, you know, whenever, let's say you have multiple activities. Now, let's say in this snippet itself, I'm showing you set variable, right? Now, set variable is an activity. Now, the moment you pass it on, then the moment you have activity two linked to your activity one, there's an option, right? Add activity on success, failure, completion, and skip. In this case, you can simply choose on completion. Instead of on success, you can simply choose on completion and you can simply link the next activity. Now, in that case, even if activity one fails, right, still your activity two will continue because you have said completion over here. The link between the two activities is a completion link, right? So if you want to make sure that your, uh, your first activity success is a success before it triggers the second activity, then in that case, you choose success right so in case you just want to complete it right 
you don't want to you know uh, you, you don't have that requirement where you want to make it a success then only proceed to the next if that is not the case you can simply use on completion so this is how you can actually explain to the interviewer in this particular case. Now, even in the delete part, right, for the people uh, who uh, are not very much familiar with the Azure Data Factory, this is the snippet, right, for my previous question as well. So in the activities, you can simply choose the delete over here, delete files, and then you can provide the configuration, so whatever file you want to delete, and then you can set trigger on top of it if you want to. So this is how you can also delete the uh, files. And this was the third question which I already explained to you that if you want to make sure that your activity 2 or activity 3 progresses, even if your activity 1 fails, in the pipeline, in that case, you will simply choose on completion link with the between the two activities. So this is how you can actually answer to the interviewer as well. So I hope you like this particular video. Do let me know in the comment section if you have any doubt. And thank you so much for being here.